Hey guys, welcome back. So our last tutorial ended with us creating our first parent class and then making some blueprint babies. And we saw how easy it was to create different enemies based on a parent class. Today I wanted to continue by talking about a special kind of variable called a struct. A struct is a lot like a carpenter's tool belt in the sense that a tool belt holds a bunch of tools that serve a common purpose, which is to craft something. A struct holds a set of variables common to an act or a specific purpose. So instead of having to carry a bunch of individual tools like a hammer, screwdriver, or tape measure, Carpenter can simply pick up the tool belt and is ready to go. Same goes for a struct. Instead of creating individual variables, you can create one struct which holds the data of those same variables. So let's create one and see how this works. So we're going to right click here in our content browser. And we're going to go to blueprints. If you guys see all the way at the bottom it says structure. We're going to click on that and we will call this enemy struct. And we'll double click here and open this up. And now you see it gives us this little um, graph here. And what we want to do, I'm going to slide this down, is create a few variables here. So we'll just hit new variable a few times. Now this first one I'm going to call damage. And we'll make this a float. Second one I'm going to say is cooldown, also a float. Third one can be point value. This can be an integer. Can have another one, fire rate. This can be a float. Create a new one. Just call this weapon name. And this can be of type name. And we can make one last one and just call this uh, magazine max. And this will be of type integer. And we can save this and close out of our struct. Now I'm going to go into the master enemy because I want this um, struct variable that we're going to use to be able to be seen in all of our children that we create. So we'll double click on our master and we'll go over here to variable and we will say enemy data and I'm going to come over here and change the variable type and now we're going to search for our struct which was called enemy struct and you see it comes up right here so now we have this variable enemy data that is of type enemy struct and if you guys notice if I pull this out and say get you can right click on this pin and say split structure pin and now you guys see all of those variables that we just created in the struct itself are now here as part of an expandable um, drop-down menu. So what can we do with this kind of stuff? Let me delete this here. First thing we can do off of begin play, let's compile this first. When we compile a struct, you see it gives us default values for everything all the variable types that are within. So we can set damage to 15, cooldown to maybe 1, point value to 100, fire rate to 0.5, weapon name to pistol, magazine max to 12. Compile and save this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually replace this damage here with our struct. So I'm going to drag our struct out. And I'm going to split this structure pin. And instead of hooking this damage variable into the minus, I can now delete that and use this enemy data damage. And because that's set to 15, this will be the exact same value. We can compile and save. 
Now for this it may seem like overkill to have a struct in here, but when you start making a whole bunch of, see these parent variables, we don't need damage anymore so I can delete it. And I can now put enemy data here into our parent variables. But within this you see I have six different variables. So this kind of keeps your code looking a little bit cleaner. If you're going to have a whole bunch of variables that are all related to you know, the weapon, the cooldown damage, things like that, it's a good idea to put these into a struct because more than likely you're not just going to be using one of these to attach into something like this. You'll also have algorithms and certain things that you know are right next to this that maybe you'll want to have a cooldown right after this. So, for example, we'll say this was actually shooting something if our master enemy was you know, firing a pistol or whatever and not having an overlap event here. So maybe it hit the player, we want to take out damage. We can use this struct and find the damage. But we also want to have the name of the weapon show up above the, play, above the enemy that's using it. So we would be able to get that information from here and say maybe set some text variable if we created one. I can go over here and just say weapon text and make this a text variable. Compile and save this. And just for demonstration purposes, I'll drag this out and hold Alt. And say this was attached to some widget or something that the player would be able to see, and we'd want to be able to show them what kind of a weapon the enemy player is using. We can drag that out from here and get the weapon text. So all within the same line of execution here, we're going to have a lot of different variables, all related to what the enemy player is using as a weapon here. And that's the benefit of these structs. And maybe after they shot something, we now want to find out what the magazine max capacity is. We need to reload, something like that. We can have another variable here and say current ammo and we will make this of type integer can compile and save and maybe the current ammo is at zero and we want to reload so we're gonna hold alt and we want to set current ammo to whatever the magazine max is and we can just drag that out from here and attach this to the end like that so as you can see this struct becomes useful if we're going to be doing a lot of different things with different variables that are all kind of related as opposed to having you know four or five different variables here from each one of these things in the struct that we're then going to be setting to four or five other different variables you can just have everything kind of contained nice and neat within this struct you can also modify things that are in a struct so if you drag out enemy data and say get and pull off of this and say set members now this gives you an option to change these values and this will automatically set them within the struct and you can see here it has these default pins right now there's nothing showing but if you click on these instead of having the whole struct show up maybe you only want to change the damage so you can just select only the damage pin and the damage pin will be available to you here and you can set that to whatever you want maybe you want to make this a hundred and from the struct out you can right click here and split the structure pin and everything that's within the struct will be available to you here can right click recombine this or you can say break struct and now it'll show up like this but the nice thing about here is you can change what you see by highlighting or ticking these pins here so maybe we only want to worry about the cooldown afterwards and this would be a way that you can get that so structs are just a really nice convenient way um, to store data from multiple different types of variables and 
just kind of helps out keep the code clean and makes things a little bit more efficient if you're going to have to do multiple calculations on a whole bunch of things within the struct here like this as opposed to having 15 variables here in a list so that is structs and you can use these just about anywhere so I highly recommend you guys do that and that'll be all for today hope you guys thought that was helpful and if you did don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more tutorials alright guys see you later